Well, I didn't know whether uh, I can just uh, I I give a, a, a line of argument which I in the my Aquinas book I expand into the into the five different modalities of it that um, he he delivers uh, in his own student's textbook. But he worked on this um, question of how one can demonstrate, show, show forth the, um, the existence of God and the rational inevitability or inexorable rational requirement that one uh, accept that and accept it as a truth. He worked on that uh, very extensively, way more than anyone who just looks at the Summa Theologiae realizes, uh, and and many of his uh, other expositions in other in other works of his now little studied are enormously more elaborate. But anyway, the the uh, the core of the 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 position in as I develop it in natural or natural rights has to do with the radical contingency of of everything with which we are familiar. The core of, uh, as it were, the other uh, of the two ways of accessing this question that Aquinas says uh, are most available to most people, th the core of the other way is to talk about the intelligibility of, of everything that we do know. So the, the impossibility of explaining adequately that there is anything and they massively is a, a lot of stuff and, and us and everything and our ability to think about it. Uh, and on the other hand, the impossibility of explaining that it all makes sense to the extent that it does as, mass as natural science and our own conversations uh, constantly remind us. Either of these can be taken as the sort of jumping off point for asking what could be a satisfactory explanation and then thinking about the forms of explanation that are, that are available in history and in biography and in natural science of every kind, which is a kind of also a history of, of the universe. Uh, the, the fact that none of those even begin to, to look like uh, giving us an account of how there could be something rather than nothing and why there should be something rather than nothing. Um, so we need to postulate, and not just arbitrarily postulate, but we need to accept that it must be the case that there's something of a kind that uh, doesn't need to be explained, that the very existence of this reality is, is self-explanatory. Now, that's not exactly the terminology that I use there, but it's, it's a short version. And and similarly, in relation to intelligibility, th there must be something which is in itself f entirely intelligible. It, that means, in, t in, in, in the end, it's something that is mind, that is spirit, and that the, the operations of which, so to speak, are, are the source of all the intelligibility of everything uh, which is intelligible to us. Now, the, the extent to which the idea of a, of a reality, the very whatness of which is also a thatness, it, it, that it exists, um, the, the intelligibility of that to us is, is limited. But it must be the case that there is such a, a source of, of reality for there to be anything uh, else. And similarly, there must, it must be the case that there is uh, something that is intelligible and a source of intelligibility for anything else to be intelligible. So what kind of being could that be? And we, we then have a series of exclusions. Well, not limited in this way, not limited in that way, and, and so forth, a series of negations. Not like uh, all the contingent and um, uh, intelligible, but not on their own terms, um, realities which we are w aware of. And by, by, so to speak, adding up those negations, we get a, a dim idea of what it must be th the case to be the divine, 